At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programmes offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. What is XVA? Well, um, if you go back a long time, probably to pre-2008, um, which I think generically um, gets called the global financial crisis nowadays. Um, derivatives valuation was considered to be driven primarily by the underlying cash flows. So if you knew what the cash flows were, the valuation followed. And actually the cash flows were often uh, quite complex. Um, that was generally sort of came under the banner exotics. And exotic derivative valuation was complex and vanilla derivative valuation was perceived as being relatively simplistic. So if you go and look at an old book and look at how to value a swap, it will tell you no problem, just project the cash flows and then discount out LIBOR or something. And won't mention a whole load of things that have happened since then. So now we really think that in addition to uh, the cash flows, we need to consider counterparty credit risk, which is, of course, driven by CVA and, and DVA. Funding, uh, which is FVA. Collateral, uh, again, going back, you would never ask yourself, what's the collateral agreement? I need to know about the collateral agreement before I do the valuation. But nowadays, that's seen as a very important thing. Uh, capital, uh, often known as KVA. And finally, initial margin, um, often described as MVA or sometimes IMVA. So we really sort of imagine that we've got this very simple formula. The actual value that we want is given by some sort of base value plus all the relevant XVA adjustments. And I put a plus there. Of course, uh, you may well understand that these adjustments are often going to be negative as costs. Um, but they can potentially be positive as well. So. Um, why make that separation? Why not just say, well, it's the value. You don't have to split it into base value and XVA. And there may be a number of reasons for doing that. One is that the base value might be what you used to do um, all those years ago before you realized all these things should be there. Although that might not be right, because what you used to do might have been liable discounting. Um, probably more relevant is the fact that XVAs tend to be complex portfolio level calculations and the base value is probably a relatively simplistic uh, transaction level calculation. The base value may just be a discounting problem and the XVAs may be far more complex than a discounting problem. Um, so that's the separation and that's also been seen in most banks where there is a separation between a traditional trading desk which is generally asset class specific like the swaps trading desk or the FX trading desk and the so-called XVA desk or central resource desk which deals collectively with these valuation adjustments. Now, the XVA desk deals with a lot of the complexity now in derivatives pricing and valuation because of the fact that those exotics I mentioned just now are much less common than, than they used to be. So therefore, the products themselves are not complex, but the underlying methodology itself is much more complicated. And a lot of the complexity lies within the XVAs. Mm -hmm.